G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now the Sunderland is moving along. Most of this is basically dry fit and I wanted to do that to see if the uh, cannons in their emplacements, right, if they could be built up but removable for painting. And yes, they all are, both the forward, the rear and the centre one all can be built up and put on a sub-assembly. So there, there is a way to do that and I'll show you that. I'm also working on things like, you know, the rudder and the... Um, the stabilizers and the the aerolons and those sort of things to fit in the wings. Those wings are just dry fit into the fuselage for the moment. I've also been working on a scratch interior. So in this video, I'm going to show you basically how my scratch interior works, how I improve the blobby pilots and some additions and things I've added. Well, I will add, you're not seeing them yet. So there's quite a lot to unpack in this video and I hope you'll keep watching. All right then, roll the music. Now starting at step three of the instructions, because steps one and two involve putting in all the clear parts in the fuselage, which I'm not going to worry about for the moment. I need to do a lot of prep and painting. Now that's basically what you're given for an interior, right, with your pilots. But there is a problem. There is a problem. Um, here's a pick. If you put the pilots in at the height they are with those seats, they kind of bang on the top of the, um, the clear part, right? So this little clear part, they kind of bang their heads on it. And um, hey, look, hugely oversized. If you have a look at photos of the interior, the um, height of the seat should be where the shoulders end, okay? So what I've done, if he won't fall out as I turn, this little guy on this side, he's the right height. You notice? Can you see the difference between the one in the foreground and one in the background? He's sitting a lot lower, okay? But you can see it there, can't you? All right, my hands don't wall. And yet, all I have done, well, I've cut his arms and made them come out a bit and cross some tidying up. I've actually done a whole lot of work on him with his legs. So I'll show you how I cut down both the seat and the pilot so they're going to fit in the cockpit a lot better. I first start by cutting him off the knees, poor little bugger. Yeah. Now I score this, which is going to make it neater when I get in with the um, trimmers and cut. That's a method I use a lot where I'll basically score the knife first, then come in with my nippers. So that's off, trimmed. Now what I need to do is chamfer it a bit, put a bit of an angle there on the joint. That'll become more apparent later. The legs, I'm taking two millimeters off. Yeah, poor little bugger. He's gonna be a little bit shorter. So two millimeters off him, and again, I chamfer the joint. And this means that the legs turn around correctly underneath him, right? Because if they were just square, it'd be sitting out like he's lying in bed. Now we need to move on to the arms, and they'll have to be very carefully cut away. The only reason I'm doing this is he looks kind of like he's in a bloody mosh pit, just jumping up and down like a punk rocker. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. So I'm just going to remove the arms, right, and then cut them off there. Like I've only scored them back to the elbows, again, the elbows, knees. Clean that joint up, again, 45 degree, a little bit of chamfer, okay. And then the same with the arm, that's at a 45 degree, and there you go. That will join on there perfectly. Okay, now I'm also going to do a bit of bottom work here. <laughs> yeah, for some reason they've got his posterior sticks out, so I've shaved that off a bit. Okay, assembly. Bit of glue. We can put on his short legs now. They should fit perfectly. Okay, no problem at all. And then the arms will go on. And again, because I've made those joints the way they are, his um, arms are up a little bit. He looks a lot more lifelike. So this should solve our pilot problem. He's going to look a lot nicer and he's going to be a lot shorter. Now moving on, I need to fix these chairs. They're like bloody lounge chairs. They're big and over padded and far too thick. So I shave a little bit off the back, get that more perpendicular, which helps the pilot sit there. And then the bottom part there, that needs removing as well. Now I can cut it and I can also file it. There's a few sort of methods, but it all comes out. And some perfect plastic putty, just to fill up a few little gaps and seats. They probably wouldn't be seen anyway, but you know what the heck, we'll do it. And it doesn't have to be actually perfect. <laughs> And here we go, here's our shortened pilots, in they go. Got the tweezers, but actually it's just as easy to put them in by here. And now, you'll see their shoulders are only as high as the seat backs. So they sit there fine. They look great. Much better than they were before. So now they're um, a more appropriate height. So not that there's anything wrong with being tall. Well, in a Sunderland's a bit of a problem. You bang your head on the top of the canopy. Step four is all about this front turret. Now, it's designed to slide back and forth. But it's, um, <laughs> it 
it's a bit dicky and I'll probably end up just cementing mine in. If I was doing a diorama I'd probably have it back because then you can have an opening here, probably not quite as big as that, and you'd have an anchor coming out which would be rather nice, but I will, as you can see it's a bit, it's a bit of a sort of a kitschy dicky sort of thing, there we go. I'll probably just cement it in because there's also this horrendous gap around here that's not very uniform. In fact, it seems like one side of the fuselage is slightly thicker than the other with the way the plastic's been moulded. So I think the best idea there is just to cement that place, fill that up. Now there's not much to this. You've got a backing piece and in that will go a pilot with a machine gun. And I will be replacing the machine guns with metal ones, but just for now, he just clips into there like that, which sort of seems off centre. And you know, and he is a blobby little character, but really by the time you put him in there, I say everything is just friction fit here at the moment. This is the clear part that supplied the kit and it does distort a lot. But that's kind of good if you want to hide that blobby little gunner. And if that's the way you're going, then yeah, you know, it's actually quite useful. So that will fit on there if it'll cooperate. There we go. And there you go. That's your placement. Now, I'll be putting a snappy little metal barrel in there, which will look a little more accurate and also be a bit more detailed than just that stick that Airfix gives you. But really, it'll do the job. I mean, if that's all you're doing, that'll do the job. And if that's all sort of glued in there and you at least add a little bit of filler to sort of remove that horrendous sort of uneven gap. I mean, I could sand that gap around and make it nice and uniform, but it still is quite big. So I'm able to then pull that part out, right? And I can put that aside to work on. And then this here, as I said, I'll just cement that in and putty it up ready for painting. Step five was all about making this little bit, which is just two halves glued together. They go together fairly well. It didn't require much sort of clean up. In fact, you know, there's very little to sort of clean up on this kit. There's some adjustments to make. That's the thing, to make things fit. So that's what's going on there. That just slides in and out. Moving on to step six, this will be the central gun here atop the fuselage. Now you've got um, a whole lot of pieces here to sort of put together. You have got the rotating turret, right? But that's got to sit inside this sort of um, arrangement. So you've got to glue it all together. But I found actually you can you can dry fit the whole thing. It's not really a problem. So that piece clicks into there, and there's a quite a good positive fit on that. So it will stay, okay, and then you've got to push up through this one. A bit of fiddling, that's how it should be, yeah, the rotating part should be in the middle there. So then that whole um, turret assembly should rotate, so that's quite good. That then lets you put the fuselage halves together. Goes up through there and in there. And we have the clear part again here. And this time, instead of the machine guns fitting into the pilot, they actually click into the canopy. Because then you don't even need to glue it, because then that clicks on there, and it should all hold in place once you've cemented the clear part in. So, here we go. It's a bit, a bit fiddly. All right. Now, there is a gunner, but he's absolutely horrible. <laughs> he sits down really low. You can hardly see him anyway. He's so awful, I don't even bother. I don't even think I'll bother putting him in quite frankly, because all you get a little blobby head in there. Hardly even worth it. Now, I have added these two little pieces already. You, you are instructed to put them on much later. But because I want to do the painting process early on, and I will be taking like the glass areas off, they were worth putting in now. There'll be some other little pieces I'll add. I won't add fitted little aerials and pop-up things, because I will knock those off later. And they're easy enough to glue and put in at the end. But any sort of major part that might need a little bit of putting and filling, I'm going to do that now. Now, as you can see, there's um, going to be quite a bit of work here to draw this up and actually get it to level out. It um, appears to be almost two different heights. There's a bit of a sort of a flashy edge there that you've got to clean up. I think a lot of it you try and do before you cement. So um, possibly this all needs cleaning out, cleaning up. I think you need to work on that as much as possible because the, the join is, is not that good across here. And that is really annoying because it's the thing that's going to be seen the most. So it's right there in your face. So... A little bit more prep work until I can get that actually to dry fit and hold together perfectly. And then I'll think about committing to uh, actually join the fuselage halves together. 
Like everything with this kit, you really need to do your prep work. It's an old kit, you'll have little fit issues, so don't just blindly go ahead and put things together. This is why I'm doing a lot of dry fitting, seeing where the problems are, so that when I actually get to the gluing, and I, you know, planning for the painting, I'm already aware of what I've got to try and sort of fix up. Steps seven and eight are about making a little quad gun here, which is rather nifty. And even the airfix parts, I mean, you could just about live with them, you know, if you wanted to. You don't need to get metal barrels. I just have bought them, got to use them. It's not much to it, like with everything. There's a blobby little gunner in there who will hardly be seen. And um, there's a couple of twin gun. Now, this isn't quite the arrangement that I've seen in my um, photographs of the actual vehicle. They, um, It's more a case of they, the two middle ones, two top ones here, should be more towards the middle. But they don't really sort of accommodate that in the, um, the airfix part. It's just made simple, I think. And possibly there were variations and different kinds of quad mounts used. So who knows? You know, I'm, I'm not sure about accuracy here. You think airfix would get it right. I mean, it wasn't far after the war. It's only 1959 this was built. So now that whole thing then will go into here basically afterwards. You don't have to worry about putting it in and gluing it in now as it fits in quite well. So that's another sub-assembly that I can make up and worry about later. So what I wanted to know was could we pull everything off? And yes you can, look, there you go. So that means that does need a little bit of clean up in there. Sort of um haven't quite got to that. There is a little round piece that goes in there which I will need to put in before I basically um cement the hull halves together, you know, fuse large halves. A hull, it's almost like a ship. So I'm not going to have this thing rotating. So um, basically I could probably get away with that. Although I could remove the um, the gunner and the guns, right, and put this piece in, glue it to the bottom bit. So there's a couple of options there, and both of them allow me to paint the whole thing up without having to worry about the super detailing of, um, you know, blobby little gunners and um, the machine guns, which I'm going to replace. Now... If I go with the um, VAT form for the back here, which could be a possibility, so I'm syncing with the other ones, there's hardly much point, you'd rather hide everything. If I went for the back form back here, then I could probably cut the holes correctly to have the guns sitting how they should be. Well, how I've seen them in the photos. Now there isn't much interior for this. There's only, as, as we've seen, there's really just that. That's it. Okay, and that's okay because really you can't see much inside anyway. And I'm not going to have the little um, Bombay doors here on the side. I'm not going to have those open. I'm going to seal those up. Just put the little porthole windows in. So really, there's not much at all. I'm not going to show much of the gunners. I'm just going to use the Airfix very, very thick plastic there so it hides everything. So this is the only area you get seen, but you can see back. So it's um, going to see into sort of a big hole here. Now... You probably won't see much, but what I can do, just to make this more interesting, is I can put in a bulkhead, and there was one. There was a bulkhead right here. It's about a centimetre back from the, um, the edge there where the canopy starts. Centimetre back, and it goes up through there. And it's the same on this side. One centimetre back, it's actually between those two round windows. So again, and it just comes in from the edge of my platform. So that's good. So I could make a nice little piece, but how do you know what the shape is, okay? That's where you use a tricky little tool like this, okay? So this is a way to find a shape. Now I'm going to need about that much height, so what I have to do with this is push it down so I've got a lot, all right? So I've got quite a lot. And then coming in at right angles, okay, I can simply, as long as I'm lined up to the spot that I want to be, I can go and push. And then when I let go, there's my curve. Easy as that. So I'll do it on the other side as well. Mark that out on some plastic and cut it out and we should have a bulkhead. cutting and sanding I've got my piece now I must admit this is the second one 
Because what happened is I um, realized my center line was out. And the only way to figure that out is I put a rubber band around the fuselage like this, right? And then you know that is the center line. So when you've got that, okay, when that line's up there, then you know you've actually got it, because otherwise you could have it sort of angled and that was a trouble, I sort of had it out of whack. So you need to know that center line, is it correct? And so it center lines up there, and therefore I could use that half that I got correct, the other side seemed all wobbly, is just use that as a pattern. Okay, so I had that side was good, but this side just didn't work out. So I could use that side as a pattern to create that, and then to create that, and I'd marked my center line points. This is all about fabricating. If you don't understand it, that's okay. It's it's just, um, you make it, it doesn't fit. You fiddle around, you make another one. That's it. All right, so now I'm going to try and see if it actually will close up. So making sure that it's on its center line. Okay, so that center line matches up to there. And I'm putting it just behind where the um, mount is and just in front of that window. So that should all be correct. And if I've got this right, see there it is. It's got to be in front of those two windows. So I'll just pop that in there. And can we see it? Can you see it? And over we go. And lo and behold, it fits perfectly. So that's pushing against back there. Yep. So it will fit. All right, <laughs> I hope you can see that. It does fit, okay? It does fit. The shape's correct. And that's the thing, using the profile tool and then um, checking your center line, to make sure that you haven't actually lost your angle, you'll eventually get it correct. And I so say you might have to make two. You make one and maybe only one half fits, the other's wobbly. That's okay. You can take the half that fits, double check your center line, and use that to create the other two sides. Easy as that. Another way is you can make it out of paper. And then, you know, have a couple of goes of paper, but I've got quite a bit of this stuff. So I'm pretty confident that will fit. Uh, what I do now is I cut a little door in there because there's a little doorway that goes through. There we have it, my shortened pilots and my bulkhead behind there. There's still quite a big hole. I probably made the doorway too big, but I kind of measured it to what you know doorway sizes would be, 172nd. What I might do is they had a cloth curtain, so I might put a little bit of fabric behind there, scrunch it up, and that'll seal everything off, and that'll look fine. Um, yeah, sort of defeated the purpose. Got a hole, uh, but it's okay. It'll work out. My bulkhead fits perfectly. That's the thing. That's the trick using one of these, putting in there. So I'm really happy with that. And um, I suppose the test is, yep, their heads do not bang on the top of the canopy now. So that's good. And I could cut out, and I probably will cut out the um, vac form canopy, and I'll really be able to see in there, see what's going on. But look, I've achieved what I want to do, which is get those pilots down to a more realistic height and also see if I can add a little more detail cockpit. Now there is photo etch still to go in there and there's photo etch on the side panels and, and I'll probably put a bit of stuff on the back there. That'll improve it too. But these are sort of things you can do that are simple and they're, they're a little bit fiddly, I know, but they're really not that hard to do and they just elevate your model just up that little bit, just add that little extra detail. And you know, and then you can say, well, I didn't just build it out of the box, I did this. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this time. I'll um, join you next time. I'll have all those barrels in all the cannons and um, I'll start painting everything. So that'll be pretty exciting. Oh, and the photo etch, I'll show you as I put that on. Can't put that on until things are painted, so there you go. And don't forget, if you like this video, you know, hit the like and all the other buttons and everything like that, sub, that sort of stuff. And um, you can always buy me a curry if you really like to help me out. That uh, makes sure that I'm fed every week. Yes, it does. All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia and it's Hooroo from Harry Udini. <laughs>